Hello, Gene Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. If you've been following these vlogs, sometimes you'll note that I'll mention something that our liberal friends have said or done and then said, I really don't understand why they said or did what they did. So I'm going to this time do something a little different because I'm actually going to ask a question in a way that it's not just a rhetorical question this time. I really hope that somebody can explain this to me. Hopefully a liberal. Hopefully a liberal is watching this vlog and could explain in the comment section my puzzlement. If not, then maybe some, well, anybody who has a theory. I mean, I'm open to anything. I just want to know. But before I get to that, just very briefly, because as I've also mentioned, I recently moved from New York City. I still care about the city. I want to help New York City if I can. I want to help the city if I can, and if I can help the city and help our liberal friends and help America at the same time, why not do it? So I'm going to do it now. Just bear with me for a minute while I put up this headline. UN warns it will run out of money by end of the month. So. My first suggestion to help the United States of America is don't give them any more money and just leave the UN. It won't help the UN perhaps very much, or maybe it will. You've all heard the phrase tough love, so this will be tough love, but it will help us because it will save us some money. Now, what do we do with the UN? We got this whole building here. This suggestion actually comes from Rudy Giuliani when he was the mayor of New York some years ago in the 90s. I think it's a great idea. I've heard nothing about it since. So I'm going to tell you the idea right now. It's very simple. Once we've emptied the United Nations building, as you probably know or may know, there is a housing shortage in New York. Now look at this building. Look how many windows there are. Just take two of those windows and just divide it into the total number of windows, you have a lot of housing there, a lot of condos and apartments. So that was Giuliani's idea. Turn the United Nations building into condos, or I would say uh, apartments. You could have condos on the top floors and you could have apartments below, and then you could have retail on the ground floor. You could have a supermarket, stores. I think it would be wonderful. That would be the first part of the suggestion, this is a multi-part suggestion. So the next part is what to do with the people in the United Nations once we evict them and throw them out. Now, my original idea was just uh, send them out of the country, create a new headquarters in Brussels, right next to the European Union headquarters. And in the meantime, they could just maybe share the European Union. They're not really doing anything anyhow except talking. It'll be a little tight for a while, but they'll manage. And remember, it's for world peace. That was my original idea, but a better one, and it just popped into my memory. I'm not sure if this is my original idea. Somebody else might have had this idea and stated it, and I just heard it. Unfortunately, if that's the case, I don't remember who it was, so I can't give that person credit. But whoever it was, just my hats off to you, a little hat tip. Thanks for the suggestion. I think it's really great. And this is where we get a twofer, because we get... One part of the twofer is we get the housing downtown, and this is a great location. This is 42nd Street and the East River. Those upper floor, well, condos or apartments would have fantastic views. You would get a lot of money for those apartments or condos, and if we're talking condos, you can get incredible uh, property taxes. Well, and if it's apartments, then from the landlord, you'll get incredible property taxes. And I know, well, we all know just the person to develop the United Nations building, Donald Trump, after he leaves office. I think this would be a perfect project for him. You see those flags in front? Well, just take away all those nations' flags and just have a big T, you know, Trump. Trump, 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 Trump. And New Yorkers, our liberal New Yorker friends, they can look at these flags and just uh, enjoy them and um, salute them, I guess, probably in their case with one finger. I just think it would be wonderful. But getting back to this unknown person's suggestion, or it could be my suggestion, we could work with our liberal friends who care so much about helping the poor. 
we could move the United Nations, the personnel of the United Nations, to Harlem, build a whole new UN headquarters in Harlem. I can, well, I used to live in Harlem, as I've mentioned in the past. I lived there for over 10 years. So I can tell you they are wonderful people there, really. They are nice people, but they are not wealthy people. You barely have a middle class there. And I would say you have a very large, slightly below middle class. So this would be a tremendous boost to the Harlem economy to have the United Nations there. And then you have all these embassies downtown. Maybe they would move uptown too. And if they don't, well, then those ambassadors, they might have an opportunity to enjoy New York City's wonderful public transportation system, especially the subway. I mean, if you want diversity, trust me on this, if you want diversity, there is no better place to experience diversity than in a New York City subway car. I, I think it would be very eye-opening and very interesting for them to experience that. Just wanted to get that out there because whatever the main subject is that I may want to talk about, whenever I can help world peace or New York City or America or our liberal friends, then I want to do it. I'm sure you do too, so I'm sure you all understand. Now we get to my main subject today, which is this phenomenon that I just cannot understand. Now this first tweet, I have to set this up. Hillary Clinton or somebody around her floated the idea of her running for president again against Donald Trump in 2020. And she said that if she did, she would beat him for sure, or as she said, beat him again. I guess she's talking obviously about the popular vote, that she won the popular vote. But in the meantime, well, that's what this tweet means. So let me put the tweet up here. As you know, with tweets, you have an original tweet which is below the response tweet. So Hillary Clinton, as you can see here, she tweeted, don't tempt me, do your job to Donald Trump. In other words, don't tempt me to run against you, do your job. And you can see this woman, this tweeter, Mel, she tweeted in response, like Monica did yours. Personally, I think that's pretty clever. But there's a point to this beyond it being clever, and that requires me to read this second tweet. So let me get this one out of the way, and then I'll make my point or actually pose my question that I hope somebody can answer. This tweet comes from Penda Jess. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this. You can just read it. But here's the tweet, and as you'll notice, I had to blank out some of the text. I really don't give a flying, dodging blank, what made up blank, fake 45, that would be Donald Trump, 45th president of the United States. And obviously here we have a person who still cannot accept, as a lot of our liberal friends cannot accept, that Donald Trump won the election and he is the president of the United States. Anyways, continuing the tweet, and the cover-up crooks want to bring up about Biden because it would never ever compare to anything the blank face has accomplished. After blank face reps can't never again bring up blank about Democrats, never ever. Now, leaving aside the mangled syntax of that last sentence, this is the part I don't understand. Now that first tweet, I thought it was clever. I thought it was, a little, you know, obviously cynical, but it was clever. But I also thought it was polite, whether you uh, agree with it, whether you thought that was a good tweet or not. I suspect that the second tweeter did not think it was a good tweet. But when you look at the second tweet, this is what really puzzles and bothers me. This constant use of four-letter words, this need to swear this need to swear and curse and use profanity in comments and tweets, but not just comments and tweets, but 
speaking. And when I say speaking, I mean all the way up to the top of the Democratic Party. You had one of the co-chairs of the Democratic Party speaking before a group of fellow Democrats using four-letter words. I'm not going to repeat them. You have also Rashida Tlaib. She's an elected member of the House of Representatives, a congresswoman, and she said very early after winning election, we're going to impeach the mother blanker. I don't understand. I mean, that's not an argument. There's nothing substantive there. There's nothing you can respond to. There's no point made. It's just an angry rant. To be perfectly fair, of course, there are angry conservatives, angry Republicans, angry Trump supporters, too, who will tweet out or speak out or shout or write something that is very angry. But you do not see, to my knowledge, somebody can correct me, and if it exists, it has to be rare because I read a lot. As you maybe can tell from the substance of these vlogs that I do, I read a lot. And I can't remember seeing any four-letter words at all used by Republicans and certainly not by congressmen and elected officials and officials of the Trump administration, certainly not publicly. Maybe somebody let loose a pejorative in private, but you see this all the time from Democrats. And the farther to the left they are, because in fairness, you don't see it from moderate Democrats. I want to be fair, but the farther to the left you go, the more of this profanity you see. And I don't understand what they're hoping to accomplish. I don't understand why it is that they do it. I would love to hear a theory. Anybody who wants to put something out there, I'm happy to read it in the comments, put them in the comments, but especially any liberals who may be watching this to explain, number one, why they do it, but an even bigger question is why they do it and conservatives don't. That is a stark difference. Now, as I said, there are uh, many Democrats that do not use pejoratives and four-letter words, or I should say four-letter pejoratives, four-letter words, who do not swear and curse. And I don't think, well, I'll just say it's very, very rare that a conservative will do that, okay? It's very rare compared to the frequency with which Democrats do that or far left liberal Democrats do that. It's a big enough discrepancy that I think I'm not too far off to say that Democrats do it, Republicans don't. I just want to know why. That said, I just want to know why, and I just want to know why you don't put a thumbs up if you like this video. So a thumbs up if you like this video, and you should share it with anybody you think would benefit from it. As I just said, put any comments that you may have in the comment section below the video. It doesn't have to be about this specific question, just anything that you want, and you could subscribe. I love getting subscribers. And finally, come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing all of you. And until I do, bye.